Hello, my friends. Welcome to Fishery. I'm Alexander Williamson, and today we're going to be talking about the five major reasons why people fail at keeping planted aquariums. The five major reasons that they just can't keep plants alive. And a lot of these reasons are easy things to fix. So let's talk about it now. All right, so before we talk about anything, I just want to show you guys that I have a few plants. I have a few tanks as well. Now, I like to show people my aquarium or my fish or whatever the topic of the day is. I like to show them what it is that I've accomplished in case you're new to the channel or in case you haven't seen videos before so you can decide is this something that I want to achieve in my tanks? Is this the kind of stuff that I'm interested in and that is applicable to me? So here are my tanks and let's kick it off with number one, the first reason why most people I talk to over the last six years of being a fish YouTuber troubleshooting and helping folks with their problems in their aquariums, let's go over the first and foremost reason why people have trouble with planted tanks. All right, the number one reason people fail while keeping aquarium plants is that they don't actually understand, because nobody tells you this, especially at big box stores, how plants are grown for the aquarium hobby. So pretend we're down in Florida, sunny Florida. Well, out in the swamps, they grow tons and tons of aquarium plants, and they grow them just like this. And when they have their roots in the soil, underwater, and they're getting all their nutrients, like their minerals, from the substrate, rather than the water column or the air or something, uh, then that is called immersed growth. So this plant here, which looks completely different above water, this is Bacopa monieri. And it has a little blue, blue flower even. And this form of it adapts to living above water. It grows two to three times faster above water. And this is why nurseries and uh, people who supply fish stores with plants, this is why they grow them this way. However, when they have to adjust to life underwater, they are a completely different looking plant. So here, this plant is the same plant we were just looking at. And it has to completely get ready for life underwater. And that means everything from putting out new different roots to changing the texture of the leaves. So here you can see what we call melt. And this leaf here was above water, but now it's below and it's turning translucent. Well, a lot of people think that they're failing at keeping their aquarium plants when all that's really going on is the plant is getting rooted and situated into your tank. Over time, a lot, of, a lot of plants that were grown out of water, they will look like this, and you'll start seeing your snails and things eating them, and then people will even think, oh no, snails are eating all my plants. Well, most snails in the aquarium hobby, they don't actually eat plants that are alive, they only eat this dead tissue, like right here. And this is tissue that was above water at one point, and after being put underwater, it has to, what we call, melt, and die back, and then the plant takes that energy, redirects it back down through the stem into the roots, and establishes a really firm root base, and then starts growing submerged. So if you can get plants that are already submerged, that are already living their entire life underwater, you will find far more success. But if you can't do that, and you are buying from, say, big box stores and things, then at least know that when you see this going on, it doesn't mean you should pull the plant out or you should trim it harshly necessarily. It means that it is adjusting to your aquarium and you're not failing. It's just the plant adjusting to its habitat. Now, there are a few more things as we go down this list that you can do to help it adjust to its habitat. Which brings us to our second most important thing, which is lighting. So, if you buy a kit with an aquarium, you buy a 55 gallon or 20 gallon, 10 gallon, doesn't matter. When you buy a kit at the store, it's gonna come with a light. Aquion is a really common brand if you're at PetSmart or Petco uh, type stores. 
and it's gonna have your basic red and blue light and some white light if it's an LED. The other types of bulbs are kind of going out of style now and you don't see them as much, but let's compare that to a Fluval 3.0 light, which has all sorts of subtle hues of light. It's got dark blue, light blue, yellow, orange, soft white, uh, hard white, which is rather uh, if it's blue or red toned white light. And it has a combination of all of this and you can actually fine tune it so that you can have light that's similar to the evening or light that's similar to when things are flowering in your uh, aquarium naturally, like at the end of a growing season or at the beginning of a growing season when you want your plants to just grow vegetatively. Also, it makes your fish look better too. You can see a lot more of the sparkles and the hues and the nuances when you get that full spectrum, more intense light. Now, you don't have to do that. You can grow plants in low light and you can also just brute force by stronger light that isn't wide spectrum. So this is an LED I got at a hardware store that's four feet long and it was only 30 or $40. However, I hope you guys can see that all these tanks, they're growing a lot of algae. And this tank is only a month old and it's already growing a lot of algae in it uh, because of the light frequency that that is. And as you learn about plants, you'll learn that we measure light in units called Kelvin or K, the letter K. And that means it's either more blue or more red on the light spectrum. Well, this one is a warmer light and it means that it's going to cause more blooming of plants and algae. So the more nuanced lighting and the more expensive lighting you get, the more control you have over it. So I wanna show you guys this beautiful red plant. This is red root floater and it is a really pretty plant. And when you have low nitrates and high light, it looks like this, really beautiful. When you have a kit to grow your plants that you bought at the store, you'll end up with just green plants. And a lot of people will look at their plants and they'll see in catalogs and photos and magazines or pictures online, they'll see all these beautiful colors and details in the plants and they'll think, mine are just green, they're just not thriving, what's going on? that starts a cascade of choices that then oftentimes ends up killing the plants, which is, I need to put more in more fertilizer, I need to put in iron, I need to put in this, I need to put in that. So do your research. Iron is not going to make your plants red alone. I have a whole video on what makes plants red or colorful if that's what you're looking for. So your light, it is worth investing in a Fluval 3.0 like this here, or investing in say a twin star light here, it's worth spending that 100 to $200 on a light that will penetrate, especially into a deeper tank. The deeper the tank, the stronger the light you're gonna need to grow your plants. And you'll be able to do things like grow carpeting plants, grow little tiny delicate plants, and grow colorful plants that aren't able to grow with the light that comes in a kit from the big box stores. So number three and four are actually on the same topic of reasons why people fail at keeping aquarium plants. And that is they either buy plants that are too high tech for their aquarium. So for instance, they buy this plant. This is Rotala mini butterfly, this little plant here. And in this tank that has the light like we talked about on it that is not the right spectrum, it is just not powerful enough and not the right spectrum to grow. And because this tank has some nitrogen in it and phosphates and other things, it is just this wimpy little plant. Let me show you this same plant in a well-lit tank that has the right substrate and all the right factors and is ready for this plant. Basically number three and four on the list are overly high-tech plants or overly low-tech plants going into the wrong situation. So let me explain that. So this is that same plant that we were just looking at. This is that Rotala mini butterfly red or purple. And 
it is beautiful under this Fluval 3.0 light and when it has proper substrate. And that is going to be another important thing that we will end on. But the most important thing is knowing which plants you can actually grow. So like we talked about a moment ago when we were talking about the lighting, yeah, you can grow crip plants, you can grow bulbitis or ferns, java ferns, you can grow uh, little stem plants here and there and things like sawasertang in low light, uh, anubius plants, uh, bucephalandra even, but you can't grow those delicate stem plants. They just don't have enough nutrients in the substrate if you're not using an active aqua soil or an active uh, water dosing regimen. And if you do use a water dosing regimen, thinking that this plant said it needs a water dosing regimen, well, it's actually just gonna cause things like algae to bloom because that light is the wrong light, the substrate is the wrong substrate, and the plant does not grow fast enough to keep this algae off of it. Whereas if you have the same setup, same substrate, where we've got mostly just rocks and an inactive substrate, we're not adding a lot of fertilizer, but there are some nitrates in the tank. Here you can grow hornwort, you can grow uh, naja grass or guppy grass and sawasertang without quite as much algae. And same with adding floating plants. You have to think about, you know, where are the plants going to get their light, where are they going to get their food, and learn the actual things that a plant needs to survive. And once you understand those things, you'll do much better. Now, I want to show you, though, that if we go to number five on our list of the top things that people need to understand, it's that when you have an improperly balanced fertilizer regimen or pH or substrate, this is what happens. I have a whole bunch of plants that were in here. However, they got put into a very, very hard water tank and they all started to die. Now, some of them are barely hanging on. This is an 8.5 pH tank and that's because it has Lake Tanganyikan cichlids in it. And the Lake Tanganyikan cichlids love hard water. However, if you didn't do your research on your plants, you'll know that 8.5, that's, that's really hard pH. That's really, uh, that's really alkaline water that tends to be hard water. And that is going to be tricky to grow most plants in, and you're gonna end up growing more algae in the water and bacteria and cyanobacteria than actual plants. So I just wanted to show you that even with an expensive light, this is what happens when you just don't have the right parameters in your water for the plants. That's number five is your parameters. So even if you've got strong light, you understand melting and you're letting your plants adjust, you've got uh, a cleanup crew, you've got fertilizers, um, and by cleanup crew I mean snails or algae eaters, uh, shrimp, things that are going to help keep your algae uh, at bay. Uh, you've got all that in place, you go buy your plants and yet they're still not doing well, it could be that you live in a part of the country with water that's just not great for it. And the difference between that and this is that that tank over there used to look like this a matter of weeks ago. So it used to look like this, and this is a tank where I keep lots of shrimp. It's very soft water. There's nutrient layer at the bottom there for the plants, and I add water uh, supplements so that the water is full of the right nutrients for the plants. You even see purple on the underside of the plants there. But in the same size tank with the same light and the same filtration, we've got green water. Now some people want green water because they're trying to raise baby fish or something, but this is probably not what you want if you're trying to have a planted aquarium. And it's very likely that if you were keeping cichlids and all of a sudden you put plants in to a tank that was set up for African cichlids, you might end up with water that looks like this, all green and milky and just terrible. But if you put all these things together and you also understand 
having something like a once weekly or maybe even once daily, if it's a really bright light, full tank of plants with not too many fish, fertilizing regime, and you're using an active soil or substrate where your plants can grow, you can have a tank that's going to do a lot better and look a lot better. There are just certain habitats, there are just certain plants that don't do as well. Remember that one that was covered all in algae, the, the ferns and leaves? Well, in a tank here, where they've got plenty of light, they've got snails for cleanup, and they've already adjusted to being underwater, and the water is soft water, the pH is around 6.5 or 7, uh, they will flourish. And with the right wavelengths of light, they're going to turn beautiful colors because we've selected the right species. Whereas when we select the wrong ones, remember, it just grows algae all over them because you've got too much nutrients and the plants aren't using them fast enough. It's the same with really delicate plants. This is a tank where these plants need nutrients and they need really strong light if not CO2, although this is not a CO2 tank, none of the tanks I've shown you are using CO2, but to get a tank with all this color and all this detail and these little delicate plants, you need to have everything just right with your substrate, with your fish, with your cleanup crew, and with your light and fertilizer. And all those things can be learned and I have videos on each one of those elements, but those are the five things that I think are the biggest stumbling blocks for people setting up a tank. Now, I do want to mention that not just hard water can be harmful to plants, but really acidic water. So if you're doing a, what we call a black water tank, where there's uh, just lots of tannins and leaves and wood to the extreme, and it looks like coffee or tea or Coca-Cola in the water, that also is too harsh of an environment for 99% of aquarium plants. So know your water, know the plants you're buying, and know what the quality and the strength of light you have does to your tank with the fertilizers, the substrate, and the plants that you have. With this knowledge and information in your head ahead of time, you will have a successful planted tank. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I'll see you guys next time. If you guys did enjoy it, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, thumbs up, share, you name it. Uh, thank you so much for your time and for joining me today. See you guys next time. Bye.